you're, you're also a, an intuitive coach and you help people connect with their guides. I do. So we have I, guides here helping us on this planet. We do. My perspective on guides, again, just, just like my work with animals, my perspective on guides comes from the guides. So my, what the guides tell me is that um, there are a whole bunch of guides that are with each person, but only a few are active at any given time, which is kind of neat because people will come to me and they'll say, do I have a guide? I'm like, yes, you have a guide. I can see one guide, but I can see 30 behind you. So it's pretty cool. They switch in and out. The, you know, if you're working on, let's say you're working on writing a book, you've got specific guides who are going to help you write that book. But when you're not working on writing the book, those guides thing in the background until they're needed. It's, um, people don't realize how uh, particular guides are and how specialized they can be. Of course, we all have a main guide and some other guides that are with us all the time, always active, but then we've got these guides who are really, they're gui I call them guide teams, who come in to help with specific things. Mm, so how can, we, how can we connect with them? Um, the best way is to pretend. <laughs> Just pretend that you're connecting with them. So a lot of times when I'm working, there's a certain session I do um, in my coaching, usually where it's the guide session. We're going to meet the guides. We're going to figure out what they look like. We're going to get some names. And I always start that session out by having somebody imagine to me what the guide that we're looking at looks like. I don't just say make it up, make it up like you're a little kid, make it up like you're making up a story. The person will inevitably make up exactly the picture that I see in my head psychically. As long as they can relax into, I'm just making this up. I'm not attached. I can't get it right. I can't get it wrong. You have to kind of go into like your six year old mode. And um, when they make it up, they then start to allow that information to come in. So how do they guide us actually? Do they, is it just the support? Is it a, a coincidence? Are they here to place some things in our life so that we, you know, some objects or how does this, how do they communicate with us? <laughs> Guides communicate in any way that we will let them communicate. Um, I have a client I was working with just the other day and she's been great. She's learned how to look for messages that her, her for signs that her guides are giving her. So a four leaf clover is a sign. Oh, I found a four leaf clover. I know my guides are watching over me. I feel protected. Uh, oh, I see the number 11 again and again. This is my guides telling me, hey, you're safe. So this client's gotten really good at looking for the signs but her next step was actually she needs to start going in and asking her guides for things and receiving information back rather than just hey here's a sign of support and safety and love which are wonderful things but the guides can also give you specific like um sentences and words and real information so they can uh any way that you open up to say that they can give you a message, they will. But you have to say it's okay. So this client that I'm talking about, we really worked for a little while the other day on it's time to go in and look for some information. We're not just going to be receiving signs anymore. It's time to get some detail. Mm, so we do have to ask more questions to them. We have yes. to make them want to participate. Yeah, a lot of people are so excited to get the signs to see the four-leaf clover or the repeated numbers or the message in the fortune cookie, which really actually speaks to them, which is really cool, but there's so much more than the guides could do. They can actually um, manipulate things, but you have to ask them to do it. They can actually create things in your life for you if you ask. It's all about asking, hoping is nice, you know, I'm hoping to hear from them, but really directly saying, hey guides, I want this information. The other thing that people do is they think that when they call on their guides or when they speak with their guides, they have to do this like very special, cool prayer, you know, like that, and they don't. <laughs> they really, um, I tell people to say, I'm now calling on my guides, please be with me. You know, you don't have to do any, your guides are going to connect with you, whatever your intention is. You don't have, people psych themselves out. 
you know, and they think they have to do it in that cool, fancy way they saw in the Buddhist. You, you can do it. All you have to do is ask. So they in can, your normal voice. <laughs> mm, so they can help also in relationship. For example, we want to meet a loved one, a mm -hmm. partner, our soulmate. We can just call on our guides. Yes, but someone may say, okay, I, I want to meet Mr. Right. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't mean that then they say to the guides, I want to meet Mr. Right, bring him to me. That doesn't mean the guides are going to bring him to you in two days. What it means is the guides are going to get help you by pointing you in the right direction, giving you signs and messages, information and people that help you bring yourself to a place where you're most receptive and open and able to receive the healthiest person for you. They're not just going to hand you a guy. <laughs> They're going to make you do work on yourself so you can be in a great place to have a healthy relationship. Everybody thinks, but I asked my guides, I've been manifesting for a man for six months. Well, what were you also doing? Were you working on yourself? Were you looking at your patterns? Were you understanding your past relationships? So, um, Yes, asking your guides for help in that way is awesome, but the help, it doesn't always look like what you want. <laughs> <laughs> so you can connect right now, for example, with my guides and your guides, and they can be, we can let them do the interview and the work. <laughs> 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 they already are. <laughs> my guides are giving me information to say to you, and your guides are giving you information to say to me. So they're already doing the work. We're the translators. <laughs> oh, very, very interesting. Because I heard once that I had a guy that looked like a bear. There's oh! A, this little bear behind my back. Do, would you see that? But a little, little short bear. A little short bear. It's kind so, of like a... Um, so it's actually uh, an animal guy. There we go. So we're combining yes. both of, our, uh, both of your, uh, your talents. But that guy, if you... If you can see that guy, did you see um, one of the Star Wars's, the old ones with the Ewoks? Yeah. That's what the guy looks like to me, a little Ewok, <laughs> which is bear-like, but little mini one. <laughs> Have you seen that guy? <laughs> no, no, no. I just, I, no? <laughs> I find it funny because apparently he's quite playful, so I like that. Do you like Star Wars? No, <laughs> I've never watched that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, you have a little Ewoki like guy. <laughs> I guess. I guess they're so happy. <laughs> I guess one of, the, hey, one, of the, one of the things about um, about guides is that they they appear to us in forms that help us work with them in the way they're supposed to work with us. So clearly this guide who now you're like, oh, little bear Ewoki, and it makes you laugh. <laughs> yeah. You can kind of get the idea that uh, this guide is there to help you lighten up and have fun and not work so hard all the time. Yeah. So that your, you know, your Ewoki guide is appearing <laughs> in this way for a reason. <laughs> That's making me laugh. Just think about that. I love it. <laughs> so it's working. He's working. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. So I do want to say one more thing, though, yeah. about the guys. Um, this goes back to actually, it's kind of related to your Ewoki guide. Um, people think that their guides are going to have these super cool names like. Esmeralda of the forest, you know, they, you know what I mean? And they just, what I find when I help somebody get the name of their guide, they end up with guide names like Mike and Bob. <laughs> really? And it's not because they're a deceased loved one. The guides that we're talking about are guides who've never been in body. And um, it just, the name has to resonate with the person who the guide is guiding. And so the names end up being very common, comfortable names. So then I'll hear, Someone say to me, well, I was talking to my guide, Rick, the other day, and, you know, but, it, I mean, people, it's just important not, for people not to psych themselves out about that. So just go with what's, whatever name. What's Ewoki's uh, name? Well, it's interesting. I hear the name George. Does that mean anything to you? No. Um, when I heard the name George, I also got a visual of, did you ever read the book Curious George? No. It's about a little monkey who is kind of hard to control, and he's always getting away, but it's kind of funny. <laughs> this guy, <laughs> this is a funny guy you have here. Um, so I get George. Now, you you may get the French version of George. <laughs> <laughs> George. 
Yeah, <laughs> and maybe George. <laughs> so I have George the monkey and Iwaki the bear. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yes. This is, this, is, this um, is fun. Yeah. And you have, clearly you have some non, non-animal non guides as well, but for some reason, those are who are showing up for us. <laughs> lovely, lovely. So, and, and last thing I wanted to ask you is about the soul clearing. You have some workshops about soul level clearing. Can you, yep. is there any techniques to actually uh, clear our energies that you can show us right now? Um... It's not soul clearing, but one of the easiest techniques I tell people to use is um, this one that the guides have me show people over and over. And it's basically when you want to bring your energy into your body. And I do it before I do an interview or before I go on stage. Um, And it's you imagine that above, you imagine there's a ghost of you. So there's a, there's a physical body you and there's a ghost of you, like a see-through you. And you imagine that the see-through you, which is your energy, is up on top of your head, standing up on your head. So there's this ghosty see-through you up here. Then, using your real physical hands, you grab onto your ghost ankles and you slowly pull the energy down into your body all the way until your feet match your feet, your ankles match your ankles, your knees match your knees. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. It sounds really simple and like it's so easy it wouldn't do anything. But actually what's really cool is people look at me like, you want me to do what? <laughs> and then I'll have them do it and they'll go, oh, I feel calmer. My stomach feels better. It, it, it really brings you back into yourself. It's not about grounding into the earth or grounding into the stars or grounding into anybody's energy but your own. But that's where we're strongest is when we're fully in our own power. And that's when we can connect with the earth and the stars and and spirit. So that is what I would tell people to do. Hmm, Wonderful, wonderful. Would you have a last little message about guide or something that you want to tell us? To My last... Yeah, my last little message about the guides would be don't psych yourself out. Um, Talk to your guides like you would talk with anybody. Be polite. Um, Say please and thank you. But if you hear your guide's name is Bob, if you want to just address your guides as, hey, guides, please be with me, just do it. It's better to address them and interact with them than it is to worry about the proper wording and technique. They just want to be helpful. Thank you very much, Danielle. Thank you for this lovely time. Thank you.